All right, pop, 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 another server drop. We're back again, ready to go ahead into another episode from our web series for hacking. And today we're going to go ahead and continue on some more SQL injection uh, material. Now, last video that we had done, we demonstrated a quick basic SQL injection, talking about how SQL is for databases and how information is king and how bad guys want to go ahead and grab all your goodies out of your databases and your information and credit card numbers and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, there are ways that we can mitigate some of those things. One of them is called input validation, making sure that we only type in the characters that we want and putting a filter on. So what we're going to do in this particular case is last time, if you recall, in our last video, we had done a single quote in the name box and it gave us a little bit of an error that said, hey, not allowed to do this. Um, because the single quote we had, uh, I think it was three of them, is it was what it showed up as. So if you watch that last video, you'll understand a little bit more about that. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to put some filtering on this one, so that it will actually kind of, you know, stop us from doing that same attack that we did last time. So for instance, if I went ahead with my same old single quote to see if this site was uh, vulnerable to SQL injection, I click on login. And something pops up, says, dangerous characters detected. We can't allow these. This all-powerful blacklist will stop such attempts. Much like padlocks, filtering cannot be defeated. Blacklist and his leet alike. Leet speak. So we know we got filtering rocking and rolling on this bad boy right now. And we need to find a way to get past it. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement something, uh, a tool in my Kali Linux called Burp Suite, which is a pretty awesome tool. And if you're a web application hacker of any type, this will be your tool of choice more than likely. You need to really get to know this particular tool. Um, so we're going to go ahead and accept that. And to do it, it's going to be basically what they call an HTTP interceptor. And it's going to allow me to go ahead and intercept traffic going to a server. So I'm going to go now over here to the proxy tab. And I'm going to make sure the intercept is on. I'm going to turn it off for a moment. And you'll notice under options here that it, it goes through 127.0.1.8080. So in order to use this as a man in the middle, as it were, with your browser, you're going to need to go to your browser, come to this one instance here is Firefox. So we're going to go to our preferences. I'm going to go to advanced network. And on the top part where it says connection, we're going to say settings. And I'm going to say manual proxy configuration. And this is our local host one, so we're going to say 127.0.0.1. And then for the port, we'll say 8080. So the idea of what's going on here is that all traffic that I'm doing in this browser is not going to go directly to the web server like normal. So when I click login or click uh, login register or view log or whatever, it's not going to go the normal route. It's, it's not going to go directly to the server. It's actually going to go ahead and hit this bad boy first. And then I can forward it on to that server. So I'm going to go ahead and intercept this. But first off, we need to understand a couple things. Is the filter that was in place was not allowing dangerous characters. And single quote is considered dangerous character. So we need to put a physical name in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a name in. We'll go ahead and say uh, Angelina Jolie. <laughs> uh, like that. Okay, so we put a name in. These are just names, alphabet letters. They're not any special characters or anything like that. And I'm going to turn my intercept, make sure my intercept is on right up here. And we're going to go ahead and hit login. And you can see it just hangs here because normally it would go straight to the server, but it's not now. It's actually going through Burp Suite and I'm stopping it. Okay, now what I've done is I've already bypassed the filter because what didn't come up here? Well, that little pop-up that said, hey, dangerous characters detected, we can't allow this. That did not come up. Why? Because I wasn't using dangerous characters. I was just using alphabet letters. Now, Angelina Jolie can be dangerous, but uh, <laughs> just the regular text document here is not so. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here, and what you can do is you can modify a packet before it actually gets to the server. So I'm going to take out the password of Jolie, I'm going to take out the username of Angelina, and I'm going to do our trick we did in our last video. We're going to say single quote, space, or one equals one. As you recall, we're giving it a true statement. 
dash dash space. Now I'm going to go ahead and forward this on to the server. Forward it again. Forward it again. And we're going to pop on over here. And look at that. Pop, pop, pop. Another server drop. And we are good to go rocking and rolling. we got admin listed up here. We are now logged in as admin. So we have now, in a short amount of time, we're able to bypass uh, SQL injection input validation filters to get access to the server. Now, how did that happen? Well, in this case, where there's a difference what they call server side versus client side. Now, a lot of web servers, uh, web administrators, know that their web servers have a lot of stuff that it's doing normally. So in order to offload some of the some of the process and then some of the hit that the server will take, sometimes a web developer will offload some tasks to happen on the client side. So in other words, your side, you, the user. So what happens is they offloaded the filtering part of it to your browser, to your client. Unfortunately, the interceptor that I used, the burp suite there, was able to capture it before it made it to the server. What it did is it did get through the filter because I put legitimate letters in there and alphabet characters, and I captured it before it got to the server, and then I modified it. Now, if it was happening server side instead of client side, then I wouldn't have been able to do what I just did because then no matter what I modified on my burp suite traffic, it still would have ended up eventually at the server. And if the server was doing the validating, then the server would have said, nope, I can't allow this single quote or one equals one, and it would have mitigated that problem. So always remember as a web developer, all user input is to be considered untrusted. All user input. Okay? So client side versus server side is why this happened. Thank you for watching this video. And some other videos are going to talk a little bit more about some cross-site scripting and other web application vulnerabilities, plus a little bit more SQL Server. Thank you for watching.